it was difficult to talk to my classmates about like the struggles I was having because it seemed like the challenges and the problems were coming easy to them. Like the concepts were coming so quick and easy to them, like almost like, like they had like engineering courses before, like. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marie Brown. Um, I graduated from the University of Michigan College of Engineering in 2012 with my Bachelor's of Science in Mechanical Engineering with a concentration in Manufacturing. Kind of just wanted to come on and talk about my mental health journey at U of M. So I came from what I like to describe as two single parent households. My parents were never married and did a pretty outstanding job co-parenting me. Um, I'm the first of my family to go to U of M. It was pretty interesting transition. Like I went to a smaller high school, like my high school class was only 206 students, I believe, to being like in a big lake of U of M. Like you come on and you're one of the smartest people at your school, you know, higher GPA. And then all of a sudden it's kind of like everybody is smart and is kind of hard academically just trying to get your footing at U of M because everybody is the best and brightest and are competing for, you know, a select number of spots and opportunities. So my first year, uh, I was doing okay the first semester. Um, I didn't take as many extracurricular activities. I probably had about 12 credits and I believe I ended up getting like Mm, like a 2.9 or 2.8 or something like that. And I decided, well, you know, like I have a lot of free time, so I might as well, you know, up my credit load, up my extracurricular responsibilities. Like it seems like I can manage all this and my GPA just ended up continuing to go in the wrong direction, which was down. It seems like as I got to my core engineering classes and the harder calculus classes, uh, no matter how hard I worked and how much more effort I was putting in, I would stay in the dude like till 4 a.m. by myself. I would go to office hours and people would be so advanced in office hours that I would often, you know, sit closer to the back of the room by myself and be like, how are these people like getting to problem three when I haven't even cracked problem one? And I begin to get frustrated and not want to do my homework in a timely fashion. I didn't have the best time management skills. It seemed like it should only take like an hour to do homework. So I was only allotting like that amount of time, not understanding that sometimes homework and engineering courses take a few hours. It was difficult to talk to my classmates about like the struggles I was having because it seemed like the challenges and the problems were coming easy to them. Like the concepts were coming so quick and easy to them. Like almost like, like they had like engineering courses before. Like <laughs> I really didn't understand. So I didn't think I was a bad student and I don't believe that I was, you know, being irresponsible by like, you know, partying or, you know, not focusing on schools. I felt like I was working so hard. I couldn't figure out how to improve my coursework, my coursework outlook, like my grades just continued to drop. And at that point I was, you know, repeating classes and in the summertime and while a lot of my friends were, you know, doing internships or things of that nature. And it's like I was taking this class like two, three times. And it just, it got very frustrating because it's just like, I'm not used to needing this much help. Like, am I dumb? Like, is it a fluke that I even got into U of M at all? And when my parents would ask me like how I was doing, I would just kind of say like I was fine. 
I didn't want them to, you know, be disappointed in me. I didn't want them to know that I was, you know, failing classes and not really doing well. They made a lot of sacrifices for me to, you know, attend the University of Michigan. So it was, you know, hard to express to anybody that, hey, like, I feel like I'm I'm drowning and I, you know, need some help. I just remember I was in an orientation uh, warm-up class for um, one of the summer camps, um, and that was going to be my summer job going into my sophomore year. And Angie Farhi uh, was an academic advisor, and she gave a presentation about, you know, how to tell if a student is deteriorating and, you know, how to get them help and wellness. And it was almost like, she was like reading my life. Like the presentation was about, you know, not finding enjoyment in activities you just enjoy, you know, not wanting to socialize, not eating, not showering, not going to class, not turning in assignments, like just feeling like a zombie and, you know, staying in your room, you know, sleeping more, you know, eating, you know, junk food. And it was just like, as she was reading off the list, it was like, I was checking like every box and, I know even though the presentation was for you know, helping us to try to see this in students that were coming, uh, high school students that were coming to campus, like it really resonated with me. And it was like, oh my goodness, like I need this. Like this is, <laughs> I need like her help. And um, I ended up, you know, setting up a meeting and a one-on-one -on -one with her and just kind of like, you know, going through, you know, this is the things I'm feeling and I'm not really sure, you know, what to do. Like, um, so she sat me down and we wrote out my schedule and she was like, okay, you know, it's only 24 hours in a day and it's only seven days in a week. Um, let's write out your schedule and let's plan out what you do, like minute by minute, hour by hour. And it got to the point where, I had so much stuff going on. I was in negative hours. Like I didn't have enough hours in the week to continue to do. And that's why I was, you know, falling short. So it was like, okay, what, what activities can you cut out? What courses, you know, can you postpone taking? Like, do you need to take, you know, 15, 18 credits? Like that's quite a lot. Like you won't have time to study for all these classes and do the homework assignments. And so, I kind of felt like, okay, like I have a little bit more of a roadmap. Um, things didn't turn around like immediately. Like it was one particular class. I think it was uh, Cal 3 that I was like failing so bad that even if I took the final, I would have to get like 180% on the final to even pass the class. So I remember I like slept through it. Like my girlfriend at the time. <laughs> She like woke me up and was like, don't you have a final today? And I was like, yeah, but I'm not going. Like, And she's like, why? And I was like, there's just no point. Like, Even if I took it and got every single thing right, I still wouldn't pass the class. Like, So I already know I had to retake the class. Like, I might as well, you know, <laughs> sleep. And um, it just, you know, it was frustrating. But working with Angie, like, at first we were setting up meetings, you know, once a month. And then we got to like once a meet, week meetings to just like check in and, you know, go over things and how I was feeling and how to explain to, you know, my friends and my parents, you know, that I was needing help and my mental health was, you know, taking a toll. Um, we found that I'm really not a morning person and I don't learn well in the morning. I don't really operate in the morning. Still to this day, I'm not <laughs> a morning person. So it was like, okay, no more morning classes. Like I don't do well in morning classes. I can't focus. Like uh, it wasn't that I was necessarily oversleeping, but I would definitely be sleeping in most of those classes. <laughs> so it was like, I'm not gaining anything from this. Like make sure that my academic advisor knows like I need to take evening classes or afternoon classes, you know, when my brain is actually, you know, functioning. Um, I worked more on my time management, so I better was able to plan out, you know, my travel schedule, how much time like homework assignments would take. Like if I did end up putting some extracurricular activities just to give myself a mental break, like how much that was going to take and if that was a weekly thing or a bi-weekly thing. 
Angie also helped foster a conversation with my parents. Like she kind of like brought them in and was, you know, telling them, you know, this is how Larie is feeling and how she, you know, is struggling and trying to overcome and kind of set up a support system there so that I wouldn't feel like so much pressure that I was disappointing them and how they could better support me. And then she also, you know, encouraged me to celebrate like my little wins, like, if I was eating better, or if I was showering more, or if I was, you know, sleeping more regularly and going to bed, and, you know, if I would um, do well on an assignment or do well on an exam, like starting to celebrate those little wins and becoming more confident in class and become more confident, you know, to raise my hand and ask questions, to get in the front of the line at office hours, to do my homework differently, like, hey, if I get um, stuck on a problem, go to the next one because problem three might be easier than problem one. Like some professors didn't necessarily shape their homework assignments from, oh, this is easiest to hardest like it was in high school. So I just started finding, you know, my own support system, my own people that I could, you know, go to and ask for help. Um, a clique that I could, you know, sit with and the dude and meet with other students and we were able to, you know, peer teach each other and learn off each other. Like, okay, I got concept A and you got concept B, but you're struggling with concept A. Like, hey, if I help you, you'll help me, different things like that. Um, started getting what I needed in office hours, you know, started getting to my classes and staying awake in my classes. And when I was struggling, I still would be in front. And I still would fall asleep, but now I was in front, active, paying attention, taking notes, you know, doing all the things that I needed to do to, you know, gain momentum and gain success. And I started seeing, you know, exams, midterms coming back with, you know, passing grades, Bs, then As, then, you know, final exams coming back with passing grades and Bs and As. And I was no longer repeating classes so it was like, you know, more and more momentum built up and it just became more of a joy. Like, even though classes were hard, like I was learning new skills on how to basically break it down for myself, learn the material that I needed to learn so that I could make it through that class. Even if I had like no interest in the class, like I don't like the class at all. Like the professor is not engaging to me doesn't meet my learning style I will still figure out a way to you know manage and leverage like my support system and the resources around me so that I could get a satisfactory grade in those classes I think one of the things for me was it kind of like taught me within myself like how to you know build a support system around me how to ask for help um, how to recognize when I'm not my best and I'm not myself and how to, you know, express that to others, like what I necessarily need and leverage my resources. I think that has helped me in the long run. Um, I'm now a engineer at Ford Motor Company. I launch um, new vehicles for Ford Motor Company. Um, a lot of my skills to build those relationships I learned in college, I use every day. Um, in work or in nonprofit volunteer organizations, philanthropic organizations. I think, you know, I'm definitely a success story, like going from being on academic probation twice to getting almost getting threatened to be kicked out of the university for a semester to ending up my last two or three semesters I was on the dean's list. Like and now that I'm in my career almost, you know, ten years into industry, like nobody really asked me for um, my college GPA. Like my ticket is kind of like written for me. Like I graduated from the University of Michigan and I have a lot more experience and knowledge and understand like what it takes to work hard and, you know, dig deep and, you know, move the needle forward. I guess if I would give you advice about what to look for, you know, just start checking in with yourself and saying like, hey, like, does something not feel right? Does something not feel normal? You get into a mode where you think like, it's just me. Like, I must be dumb. I must be the only one struggling. And I'm here to tell you, like, it's not just you. It's a lot of people who struggle in silence. 
And it's a lot of people who, even though they look successful on the outside, um, are beating themselves up on the inside. I want to tell you that the University of Michigan, and especially the College of Engineering, has a lot of resources um, if you are feeling that way and if you need help, whether it's, you know, academic success partners or academic advisors. There's a lot of organizations just, you know, in between Pierpont and the dude that you can reach out and you can get help. Like there's a lot of people at the University of Michigan that want you to succeed and want to see you graduate and want to see you change the world. So definitely like don't be afraid to, you know, even reach out or, you know, go to go to a meeting or raise your hand and say, Hey, I need I need some type of help. Um, there's no way that I can, you know, make it through this on my own. You have to be okay with asking for it and potentially receiving it because University of Michigan is hard and it's hard for a reason. When people say like leaders and best, like it's the reason why we are the leaders and the best of the world is because, you know, it's a grueling curriculum that some people just don't make it out of. And I don't want you to necessarily be, you know, part of that group of people that don't make it out of University of Michigan, especially when there's a lot of, you know, untapped resources there available to help you in your mental health. So with that, I just want to say, you know, good luck on your future endeavors. Definitely reach out to your support system and just know like you're not alone. Like there is a group of people who have done this, who have been through this and are successfully on the other side. So I hope you learned something from my story and I hope you take the time to, you know, get the help you need. And as they say, you know, go blue, baby. <laughs>